day if you want. <laughs> Plenty of room. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship on Pentecost Sunday. Uh, Kind of a nice day for worship because we don't have a whole lot of extra moving parts in the service that we've had since about mid-April. So today, if you're like me, I invite you to be with God in in ways that are a little bit um, less intense than what they've been before, especially as summer starts. We can start asking that question, how is God's mission field alive and active outside even the church, and what do we do and how do we activate it when we get there. That'll be kind of the point for Pentecost Sunday. I'll also say hi to anybody watching online, because I imagine a few folks are going to access this either in a cabin today or later in the week, so you've been acknowledged. Um, Let's start, because it's Pentecost Sunday, and in Pentecost we celebrate the movement of the church outside the doors of the church. Say happy Sunday to somebody sitting next to you that you don't normally say happy Sunday to. Okay? (laughs) Don't you normally say happy Sunday to you. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Or you can use whatever greeting you enjoy. You don't have to use happy Sunday. Uh, Announcements-wise, please look at your bulletin for announcements. We need more people for the tech team, folks who run the online worship back at church that we make sure gets to uh, homebound people and whatnot. If that's youth, this is a great job for youth. Let me know. Uh, Vacation Bible School is coming up at the end of June. There's a QR code, so you can take this home and register for Vacation Bible School as well. Our Zion services start on June 15th, and we're using the the sermon series, What Does God Think About Blank? I got a lot of ideas for the blank, about 38 of them, and I had to distill them into eight different preaching topics. So if you don't hear your topic, I'm sorry, but I tried to find themes that were kind of the same and then use those. That starts for our Zion services on June 15th at 7 p.m. out at Zion Church. Uh, The pictorial directories are finished. That deserves a yay. Yay! Yay! This took a long time. But if you want one, you can uh, just give myself or tear in the office somebody $12 and get your St. Luke pictorial directory. Um, I will be on vacation from May 31st to June 7th. I want you to know that. Thank you, St. Luke Lutheran Church, for providing that opportunity for rest for myself and my family. And then the other thing I want to lift up is on June 17th, our Women's Bible Study and Pray and Play meets again from 8.30 
to 945 here at the church. Those are all the announcements that I have. Um, let's take a moment to be together in prayer. We also remembered that today is not only Pentecost Sunday, it's Memorial, Sun, Memorial Day. So we're going to pray especially for those who have given their lives that we can have the freedoms we have today to sit in pews, to think the way we want to think, to worship the way we want to worship, and all those things that we tend to take for granted, but today we won't take it for granted, we will acknowledge it. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father, on this day, we think of two things. We think of the work of your spirit moving us outside of the doors and the seats of our homes where we practice our own in our churches, where we practice spirituality and moving into the lives of places outside these doors where you're also moving. We thank you for the freedom bought for us to do those sorts of things by people who signed up to be in navies and in armies and in marines and, and law enforcement folks. People who have risked lives, who have lost lives, people who have even lost limbs, people who have lost even or have been damaged parts of their minds for those freedoms. We thank you that we enjoy those freedoms today. We ask that, that when we have opportunity to provide healing for those who have given that part of themselves in power to provide healing, we may provide those things as kind of that ongoing show of, of gratitude for what's been bought for us. Guide us today into our worship, Lord, to connect more deeply with you more deeply with each other, and to be sent out into our world to serve. In Jesus' name, we pray together. Amen. I invite everybody to please stand. Today, friends, the Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Confess our sins together. Faithful and just God, we confess that we are captive to doubt and fear bound by the ways that lead to death. We have not loved our sisters and brothers as you have first loved us. Forgive us, God of mercy. Let your Holy Spirit work in us to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the abundant life given in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord. Amen. Hear the promise. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. <laughs>
Thank you, choir, for leading us in song. All may be seated, and we continue together with a word of prayer. Let us pray together. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading today is our classic Pentecostal, Pentecostal, Pentecost Sunday reading from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2. This is usually the hardest reading of the church here, so it's kind of fun, and I never know if even I get all the words of all the different kinds of people in it right, which is also kind of fun. It reminds us we're supposed to be in challenge and go out and meet people who aren't like ourselves that have different names and languages that aren't ours. When the day of Pentecost came, they, the 11 apostles, were together in one place. This was the upper room where they were cowering in fear that they might meet the same fate that Jesus met. When suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, and I love that there are Cretans there. I mean, isn't that like a normal church, just a bunch of Cretans hanging out and listening to Jesus? I love this part. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk. As you suppose, it's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Love that reading. Kids, I'll have you guys come up. Come on up, kids. And there's plenty of room for you today. No one's got to fight for a space. Kind of nice. Too old? Okay. There's just not a lot of people. You, you, yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. Come on, guys. You guys come on. Sweet. Now, I, I, I want to tell you, you too... And any other kid here, if you want a balloon after church, take two or three or four or five, whatever fits in your folks' car. You guys want to sit right there on the step like we usually do? I know it feels super weird today. This is like a personal sermon. Okay. The first, you know what? We'll do things too a little bit differently. Should we involve all of them so it's not weird? Part of the point of the sermon today is that Christian mission doesn't have to be weird. So we're going to make it not weird. Okay? Hi, guys. Come on up. Yay. One thing I want to do, are you guys good at singing happy birthday? Yeah? So, so today, it's Pentecost Sunday, we call this the birthday of the church. The birthday of the church. And I want to make this change to worship to today. After church, because it's the birthday of the church, you guys, if you want, have your parents bring you up here to blow out the candles. Okay? Remind the parents, you got that? You can do that. Okay. Let's lead the congregation. We're going to sing happy birthday to the church. Do you want to stand up with me? And we're going to lead them. You guys have to sing too. See, we're making Christian mission not weird. Ready?
Okay, you can have a seat again. Now, one thing, so I want you to repeat two different sentences after me, okay? Say this one first. God is there. Let's do it one more time. God is there. One more time, ready? With strong voices. One, two, three. God is there. Perfect. Second sentence. How can I help? You're awesome. How can I help? Let's try that on the count of three. One, two, three. How can I help? Perfect. Perfect. What I want you to go away from today is hearing the promise that no matter where you go in the world, whether it's inside the church, outside the church, in your home, at your school, that God is there before you get there. Let's say our first sentence again. God is there. Ready? One, two, three. God is there. And he's actually doing super cool things. He's helping other people who need help. Like for people who don't know the story of Jesus, he's trying to help them hear the story of Jesus. For for people who are hungry, he's trying to bring them other people who will give them food. For people who are lonely, he's trying to find friends for them. That's why we know God is there before we get there, and we wonder if we can help with that. That's our second sentence. Should we say that? How can I help? Ready? How can I help? Perfect. Okay. Who wants to be brave with me and practice something? We're going to walk around and visit some of the old folks out there. (laughs) One Vaughn, do you want to try with me? No. Do you want to try? No. Do you want to try? Uh Uh-uh. That's okay. That's okay. Maybe I'll act it out, and and then you guys can kind of guide me in how I do it. How does that sound? Okay? So what's our first sentence? God is there. Let's say it again. One, two, three. God is there. So if I'm going out to serve these guys, let's pretend I'm one of Jesus' apostles and my job is to go out and, bring, and, and find what God is doing. I'm thinking in my head, God is there before I get there. And Naomi's sitting alone. This is my friend Naomi. Hi, Naomi. Say hi, Naomi. <laughs> That's enough. Hi, Naomi. See, you should be up there. <laughs> Naomi is sitting alone, okay? Now, Let's pretend Naomi's really lonely. Naomi, can you look sad? Naomi's super lonely. God is already with Naomi. She's not missing God. She's just missing a little bit of human friendship. What do you think God would want me to do? I'm out in the world. I'm saying, God is there. How can I help? How could I help Naomi? Could I sit by her? Yeah, I could sit by her like this. Could I talk to her? Yeah, I could say, that's a beautiful red necklace. You must have known Pentecost was coming. No, you didn't? Ooh, the spirit moves. Look at that. We found out some new things about each other. Okay, God is already there. I just wondered how I could help, and then when I have the answer, I I do it. Let's pick another person. Who's a brave person? Let's see. Hannah, can we use you? You can say no. You can say no. No, that's fine. That's fine. I like it. Are you sure? Okay. Uh, Hannah looks hungry. Ooh, she really is, okay? (laughs) Hannah looks super hungry. So God is there. What's God probably doing? Maybe sending someone to help. How can I help? Well, I could offer you something to eat. It will be after church. Not now. I actually don't have anything for you, but let's pretend I've given you a beautiful ham and cheese sandwich because I like ham and cheese. Uh, Just ham. (laughs) Are you allergic? Okay. God is there. How can I help? Christian mission doesn't have to be weird. The spirit is already in the places that we're trying to go to. God is already at work. We don't have to bring God anywhere. We just have to say, how can I help? And when we have the answer, we do it. Sound cool? Should we pray together? (laughs) All right, let's see our praying hands. Let us pray. Lord, we are your missionaries called by Jesus in our baptisms to not only receive your spirit, but to go be part of what he is doing in the world. Um, Guide us, Lord. Help us to remember we don't have to bring you anywhere in all the places and spaces we go, especially this summer. Help us to ask, what are you doing and how can we help? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for your bravery in coming up there. That was fun. And it would have been super lonely for me to have been up here alone and you guys help with that. You can go back to your folks now, and don't forget to get three or four or eight balloons when you leave, okay? 
Okay. Or you can hang out with me too. I like kids. I don't mind. You, you do you. Be you. Okay, I'll invite everybody together for a moment of prayer. Lord, you are in the places that we go before we get there. Help us to, to ask, what are you doing and how can we help? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, this Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, always holds a special place in my heart. For, for many of you, you already know this, some don't. I'm an ex-missionary myself, and so this is kind of the day that we celebrate the missionary aspect of the worldwide church, and so I get really excited about Pentecost Sunday. It's just that reminder every year that, that as Christians, when we were all baptized at the waters of this baptism, we were given the Holy Spirit not only for our own salvation and our own connection and relationship with God, but as that call to go out into the world, and our parents promised we would do this if we were baptized as adults, we promised ourselves that we would do this. We would speak the word of Jesus in word and in thought and indeed in the places and spaces that we went. So this is the Sunday, that one Sunday every year, we remember that vocation of every Christian that we are all in some way, shape, or form missionaries of our faith. I will say, and you can tell me later if you agree with this or not, that Christian mission has gotten a little bit weirder since the first century. It's gotten odd. If if you don't think it's gotten weirder, I invite you when you go home today to find a neighbor that you don't know if they're a Christian or not, or you don't know if they go to church or not, and knock on their door, and then when they come to the door, ask them, hey, do you know Jesus? Hey, do you want to? Try that. And tell me if that's not a weird interaction. If it's not a weird interaction, I'll be amazed. I've I've gone through the periods and stages in my life of handing out tracts and going doors to doors and in the first 21st century, I don't know how it was in the first century, in the 21st century, it always tends to be kind of a weird interaction. I have a story about that myself. When I was in seminary, up in St. Paul, my wife and I, this was in 2004, we were just married. We lived in the Burn Vet married student housings, little tiny apartment buildings uh, right by the seminary. And it was about 10 o'clock at night, and I think we were getting ready for bed or just, you know, doing what people do at 10 o'clock at night, kind of winding down the evening. And there was a knock on my door. And so I go and open the door, and standing in the door is a a young man dressed in very nice clothes holding a bunch of Christian tracts. And my immediate reaction is, oh no, this is going to be weird. And and (laughs) it was weird. And he he proceeds to introduce himself. He was a Jehovah's Witness missionary, Jehovah's Witness missionary. And he asks me if if I have a relationship with Jesus and would I like to have a relationship with Jesus, and he was going to tell me how to do that, and he had this literature that I could read if I wanted to do that. And my only thought at 10 o'clock at night is, did you think this was going to go well? Like, (laughs) why, why are you here? A, this is a Lutheran seminary. You're talking to people studying to be something, maybe not a pastor, but something in the Lutheran church. And so my initial reaction, and of course, I, I hope nobody feels like they have to take kids out of the sanctuary when they're being kids. I'm going to cry like a baby if this service doesn't end by 1030. <laughs> you too. <laughs> stop. Just stop. This is nice. More relaxed Sunday. I like this. This is kind of nice. So I was, I was mad, and, and what I wanted him to do was, was leave, but what really upset me was the assumption that my belief system as I held it wasn't good enough, and that this person had a better belief system for me that they would like to put upon me. It felt very aggressive. I share that just as the acknowledgement that even in our own tribe, this young man was doing what God calls him to do, go out and speak words about Jesus, those he's not sure have it or not, he was doing his Christian, his Christian vocation as a missionary, and I was upset. Even in our own tribe, Christian mission can be weird. I'm wondering if that is because sometimes we have the movement of the Holy Spirit a little bit backwards. We tend to read the second chapter of Acts as if the Holy Spirit shows up for the first time. Now, the Spirit is alive all from Genesis to Revelation. This is not the first time the Spirit shows up. This is just the first time we really read about it in the lectionary year in the second chapter of Acts. The Spirit is alive all over the Bible 
all the time, but we read this, like this is the first time the Spirit showed up, and he shows up in this little upper room in Jerusalem where the, where the, where the apostles are cowering because they're afraid that the thing that happened to Jesus is going to happen to them. To these 11 Jewish men who speak the same language, eat the same food, have the same culture, and he then brings God to them so they can now bring God to a places outside of their doors where God isn't, to these four poor foreign folks who don't have God, and they're going to make everything better. We tend to read Acts in that way, that they have the Spirit, nobody else does, and they're coming out to bring God like he's in a little suitcase to everybody else who doesn't have God and start passing God around like he's a souvenir that they got from the gift shop. Instead, what's going on is they're afraid. They're in the upper room. They haven't yet left yet because they're afraid that they're going to be followed the same situation, die, just like Jesus did, the Romans might kill them too. And the Holy Spirit drags them out into this world where he's already active and already alive and already moving. How else did all these people from the Roman Empire, these, these different countries, we have a representative from about every single country in the Middle East and the Roman Emperor, Empire in Jerusalem, how else did they all get there? The Holy Spirit has called the nations of the world to Jerusalem at this time and he sends the disciples out to be part of what he's actively already alive and already doing. And so we get this beautiful, beautiful verse where we have Parthians and Medes and Elamites and Cappadocians and, and Phrygians, and that's the hardest one to pronounce. I have to Google that one every year. Every year I have to Google Phrygians, Phrygians. He brings them all together in one place to see, to hear this word from Peter because the Spirit is already active, drawing people unto himself. I have a, another story of how this can work and, and a model of what this looks like in the Christian mission world that I invite you to listen to. And as then as we, you know, summer's a time for going out. We'll be at lakes, we'll be at cabins, we'll be in, in, in different spaces and places around different people. And if we're paying attention, the Spirit will give us opportunities to be faithful in those places, right? Whether it's with words, to speak about our own faith, whether it's just prayer, to pray with people we don't normally get to be around, whether it's in, in offering care, to sit with someone who's lonely. We'll have opportunities to do that if we're awake to what the Spirit is already doing before we get there and wonder, how can I participate in that work? So the story, before, so I, I mentioned, Chris and I, were missionaries to, to Japan before ELCA, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, of which this church is a part. ELCA missionaries go out in mission. We have to go through missionary training. Christy and I went through this in 2007 in Kenosha, Wisconsin at Carthage College, where they teach you essentially all the things that you shouldn't do when you're overseas. You know, don't let, act like an idiot. Um, don't, don't be aggressive, super aggressive. They, 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 it's, it's helpful. They teach you cultural sensitivity things. And all these things that will help you in your mission, teach you how to be safe overseas. At this training, there was a speaker, an ex-missionary from Papua New Guinea who had served in Papua New Guinea for about 10 to 15 years or so. And he, he told this story. He said when he got off the bus in his little village in Papua New Guinea that he was assigned to serve, the village headman met him off the bus in order to like grab him and take him around to his village and show him the town, the streets that were important, where he would live, things like that. And eventually the village headman brought him to the church that he would serve. He was supposed to serve that church and help them be even more active in mission to their village and the surrounding villages. Took him in the church, showed him the sanctuary, and then he asked the, the missionary, the ELC, ELCA missionary, to go up in the pulpit and tell the headman what he saw from the pulpit. So if this is the pulpit, the ELCA missionary went up to the pulpit and he looked around and he said, well, I see pews, and you have a very beautiful church, and it's very nice. And then he said, oh, and in the back, I see a big painting. So if you turn around and look at our Lord's Prayer art in the back, go ahead and do that for a second. It would have been situated, the painting that the missionary saw would have been situated in about that place. And the village headman said, what do you see in the painting? So he had to describe the painting. So he said, in, in the foreground of the painting, what he saw was, a boat with the very first missionaries sent to Papua New Guinea holding Bibles, okay? That was the first thing that he saw. In the middle ground, he said, this has been the European missionaries that came way back when. In the middle ground, he saw a group of Papua New Guineans lined up on the beach, kind of facing the missionaries. So if you guys are the boat, the Papua New Guinean missionaries, or the Papua New Guinean people were kind of lined up on the beach like this, facing the boat, welcoming them to their island. 
He said that in the back, so now picture way back, in the very far background was a picture of Jesus Christ with his arms open to all, the Papua New Guineans on the beach and the missionaries coming in the boat. And, and the, the missionaries said, oh, that's a really nice painting, but why, did, why is it in the back? You know, why don't you put it in the front, kind of like this, so everybody can see it during worship? The village headman said, the painting is for you to see, not us. You need to know that Jesus Christ, who's in the back welcoming this first missionaries with his arms around the Papua New Guineans, already there, you need to know that Jesus Christ was here before any of you ever got here. Your job is to recognize that and help us understand what he's doing now and how we can play a part. And I love that as a model for Christian. That doesn't feel weird to me. I love that as a model for Christian mission. Of course, he told the story so we could all take that model into our own mission fields. But what a cool model for Christian. Doesn't that unweirdify Christian mission a little bit? That we can leave our own holy spaces and trust that God, that we don't have to bring God anywhere. Like I said, like he's a little souvenir we pack in our backpack and take to people, those poor people out there who've never been touched by the Spirit of God. Instead, we can trust that God is already active and already alive and already moving in the spaces and places that we go. And we have to just ask that simple question, what is he doing? And how can I play a part? When we have the answer to that question, we can move forward in mission. Friends, I want you to read, when you read scripture, I want you to notice the Spirit's activity. This is how the Spirit works. We read about the Spirit on Acts 2 on Pentecost Sunday. He is, of course, alive all through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. This is the same Spirit who brought the nations to Jerusalem. So there was something for Peter to say to a group of people who hadn't heard it before. He was active in the mission field before the apostles ever showed up. They just had to get in line with what the Spirit was already doing. This is the same Spirit who called King David as king before the prophet Samuel ever shows up on David's farm to anoint King David as king over Israel. You don't have to get very far. Go to Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, it said, before God created anything, who hovered over the waters of creation? The Spirit. The Spirit is there before we get there. If the Spirit is not present in the mission field before we get there, there is no mission. The Spirit's presence, God's presence in the mission field is what makes a mission possible. We don't have to bring God anywhere. He's already there. We get to ask, what is he doing? And then play our part. I think back to that Jehovah's Witness missionary that I met um, in 2004 who showed up at 10 o'clock. I, I do wonder what he's doing now. At 10 o'clock on my doorstep at Luther Seminary. And I wonder how that interaction would have been different if, 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 if he would have wondered what are the needs of the people I'm going to before he thought of his own needs to speak his own truth. If he would have thought, I wonder if 10 o'clock is a good time to knock on this door. Maybe 7, maybe 8, who knows. If he would have come and said, hey, I see that, that this is a seminary, you know, he understands my context. If you'd have said, you may be training to be a Lutheran pastor, a youth director, or something, once again, kind of thinking about the people you go to, wondering what their needs are, what the Spirit is already doing. If he would have said, hey, I'm really interested in Christian mission. In fact, I'm kind of a missionary myself. Maybe we could talk about what Jesus is doing in this area and do something together. I love corroboration. I'm telling you, I would have poured the coffee if it was a morning visit. It was an evening visit. I would have invited him to have a beer, but I don't know if he would have said yes. Either way, he would have been invited. It changes the conversation, right? I want everybody to relieve everybody today of any sort of need or sense of responsibility that we bring God to places that he isn't. The Spirit is alive and active and moving. He loves the people out there around us way more than we do, although we might love them a lot. He's alive and active and moving before we ever get there. Our job is to say, what is he doing? And then when we have that answer, to play our part. Friends, we have a whole summer ahead of us where we are going to be around and moving in places that we don't normally go. In those places, ask that question. What is God doing with that person? What is God doing in this house? What is God doing with that community? When you have your answer, let's play our part. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord, I pray for um, all of St. Luke, not only St. Luke, but our other uh, brothers and sisters in Christ in, in Goodhue and beyond at St. John's and Holy Trinity and St. Columkill. 
all those uh, St. Peter's, all those places and spaces, uh, we will be sending a lot of people out over the next three months into a lot of places. I pray that you would open our hearts and minds to ask that question, what are you doing, Lord, with this family member I haven't seen for a while, in this community that I'm in for two weeks or so, with that person down the street who looks like they could, you could use a hand or use a word? Are you asking me to pray with them? Are you asking me to serve them? Are you asking me to sit with them? Help us to ask those questions, Lord, and then when we have an answer, give us the courage to play our part in your mission. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our hymn of the day, friends, is Will You Come and Follow Me? And I'll invite um, our, our acolytes to come up and hold the, the children's offering basket and our, our ushers to bring around the plates as we worship God also through our offering. Having worshiped God through our offering, we give thanks together. Let us pray. Generous God, in this meal, you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth and the breaking of this bread. Reveal to us the risen one. And the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite everybody to please stand and confess our faith together through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together with one voice, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Passionate God, you sent your spirit through the gifts of fire, wind, and word. As you equipped the disciples for their work, equip us to bring the good news to all those who long for you. Hear us, O God. Restoring God, wind, and flame, bring life and destruction throughout the world. We bring for those who work with wind energy for migratory birds, for protection for lands facing destructive fire, for forestry managers, and firefighters. Renew the face of the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Ever-present God, your spirit embraces all. Send your spirit of understanding to immigrants, refugees, and any experiencing language barriers. Bless the work of translators, ESL teachers, ambassadors, and international peace organizations. Safely guide those fleeing war and danger. Hear us, O God. Merciful God, you anoint us with your spirit. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as a care for those in need. We pray for all who seek your comfort, especially Keith Brown, Dolly Mensink, Judy Carpenter, Larry Reese, Jan Bennett, Dave Notke, Jen Berg, Marilyn O'Brien, Kelly Peterson, Sean Fredrickson, Pete Ponslet, Sue Majeers, Neil Stair, and Donald and Marcy Jonas. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Generous God, you impart a variety of gifts, set aflame the desire to learn from one another, especially those who differ from us. Make your presence known throughout missionaries, peace workers, and through the outreach ministries of our synod and community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Life-giving God, we give thanks for those who have died to new life in you. As we observe Memorial Day, we remember, we remember those who died in military service. Comfort all who mourn and usher in a world where war is no more. Hear us, O God. Mercy Rejoicing the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. And friends, today, may the peace of Christ be with you always. Take a moment to greet two or three or eight people near you with peace. We have time. Peace, lady. See you. Happy Pentecost. Peace, Bev. Turn this off. All right, y'all, gather hearts and minds. We celebrate the Lord's Supper together. Christ given to us, not just in word, but things we touch, see, feel, and taste. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Friends, remember again together today, on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he broke it. He gave thanks, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Christ took the cup. Having given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, this is the new promise in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together as Christ taught us to pray. Our Father... Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. All are welcome to the table. Um, I'll invite our, our uh, council members to come up and please help serve. Today is, is uh, communion around the rail. If you're new to our church, just follow somebody who's done it before, which should happen, and you'll be just fine. And I think that's all I need to say. All right. Uh, choir, are you guys communing? We're not singing the first two communion hymns. We're singing the one after the first two, which would be the third. And the choir will sing one before that. Okay. All right. Follow me. I'll follow you. Okay.
Thank you for leading us in song as we fed on the Lord's <coughs> Supper. Friends, I invite everybody to stand. We are together with our communion prayer on the very back page towards the bottom. Having feasted on the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let us pray together. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, friends, may the God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Now we're going to fill the Spirit. Okay, well, we weren't doing that before. <laughs> Even more. we had another level. <laughs> Friends, the Spirit is alive and active in the places and spaces we'll go wherever we get there. Let's ask, what is he doing and how can I help? Today, go in peace, serve the risen one. Thanks be to God. I'll remind any kid who wants, because it's the church's birthday, you can come out and blow out the candles and grab about eight balloons to take home. One more song in celebration, Memorial Day. Please sure. Please number 888. 888. Oh, beautiful for spacious time. Oh, nice. I need a hymnal. 